when uh, Father Daniel worked with me at uh, St. David's Cathedral in Cardiff, uh, on this day I would always tell him that uh, pink was not my colour. And being the liturgist he is, he would remind me, these vestments are not pink, they're rose-coloured vestments. You should know that. And uh, we wear them on this third Sunday of Advent and also the fourth Sunday of Lent because we're halfway through the season of Advent and the flavour and the tune of Advent changes from this week onwards. A feeling of expectation had come upon them. The Old Testament prophets, Zephaniah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, had all foretold the fact that God would not leave his people in exile as orphans, that he would rescue them from slavery, that he would bring them back to Jerusalem, which had been destroyed 500 years before the time of Jesus. And in the midst of all of their suffering and confusion and distress, the prophets were able to say, rejoice, be happy. God will not forget his promise. John the Baptist, we call him the last of the Old Testament prophets and the first prophet of the New Testament because he, he's like a bridge between the prophecies of old and the fulfillment of the prophecies, the Messiah, Jesus, is here. And that's why he uses a great deal of the language of the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. This season of Advent is a very special time. And it's good that in the church we preserve the integrity of the four weeks of Advent expectation and hope. And we do that in so many different ways, not just by uh, rose-coloured vestments, but also by the symbols that we surround ourselves with. Christmas trees in all the shops, Christmas decorations everywhere, but not in the church, because this is a special season. So one of the great symbols of Advent, as you know, is the Advent wreath, uh, full of meaning, uh, the evergreen, a reminder of the changelessness of God, a circular object, no beginning or end. God is from all eternity. Into this eternal circle, we put four candles. I'm excluding the white one for the moment. Why do we do that? Because it's to remind us, uh, A, of the passing of the four weeks of Advent, B, of the passing of the uh, ancient expectation and the fulfillment of the promise that God would send a Messiah, but for me, the four candles uh, speak of our lives, of time passing, of the weeks and of the years going by, and we are inserted into the circle of eternity. So when we speak about eternity and heaven and life after death, this is all part and parcel of the one reality, that yes, we do live in a world of time. The world of time is coming to an end. Once this time is finished, it will never return. And so we are aware always of the grace of the present moment. There's a saying in... Uh, one of the psychology books which goes, we human beings, we live our life forward 
but we understand it backwards. It's only looking back do we understand and even accept everything that's gone on in our lives. And the same with the Old Testament prophets. The people living their lives forward, when will this all be over? And understanding it backwards. This is what the prophets were talking about. God not absent from human existence, even in times of suffering, pain, exile, and slavery. So the three purple candles, <coughs> a reminder <coughs> that when you confront the mystery of the presence of God, the love of God in your life, inevitably, inevitably, there is a need for penance because we all know who we are called to be, what we ought to be, God wanting nothing but our good and we wanting so much less. The purple is a reminder of the need for penance and forgiveness, reconciliation and healing. And the pink candle, the rose-colored candle, a reminder that we are in this passing time which will never return. And then, of course, the white candle, the Christmas candle, the light of Christ, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. That's why, of course, at Christmas, we surround ourselves with lights, whether on trees or on candles or on festive displays. This season is a very precious one because it teaches us to judge wisely the things of earth and measure them by the things of heaven. And it teaches us that even though with the urgency of the world in which we live, and we do have to live forward in our lives, it's only in reflection and reading the prophets and saying our prayers and understanding that no circumstance of our lives lies outside the mystery of the creative love of God. Even when we're burdened or suffer or disappointed or bereaved, nothing lies outside the eternal mystery of the love and the life of God revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light on those who live in the shadow of death. A light has shone. <clears throat> 